We live by the Spirit. We live by the Spirit. We've got to get hold of the fact that this is Paul's big insistence in the Galatian letter. It's a letter written very early in his apostolic career. But that insistence, we live by the Spirit, that's what constantly permeates throughout the whole of his life and ministry. That's the truth that brings churches into being across the known world under that man's ministry. And it's the truth that gets him into appalling trouble, ends up with him banged up in jail, deserted by all, lonely and whatever, towards the end of his life. Then he ends up under house arrest, and we believe then taken out and beheaded by, beside the Appian Way at the end of his life and ministry. That is the truth at the middle of it all. We live not by the law, but by the Spirit and by faith. Have you noticed there's an if? If we live by the Spirit. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Do you notice that? Has it got, have you got an NIV? Does it say something different? First word of the verse. Verse 25. Six. Now that's a great translation. Because there's ifs and there's ifs, okay? And this if is a second sort of if. This if is not a dubious if, it's a definite if. It's a since. It's absolutely the case, Paul's teaching us, that those who are born of the Spirit, Christians, they live by the Spirit. So can you give me a description of what it means to live by the Spirit? What's happened in recent years is, in the last 20, 30 years, is that a certain section of understanding of Christianity has taken, taken over the work of the Holy Spirit. And evangelicals and Bible Christians have lost they felt it was dangerous territory, I think. And that's a terrible mistake. Paul is saying, since we live by the Spirit, and we haven't got an understanding of what that means, that's a problem. Can't what Paul is saying here it does again suggest he's very well aware of the teaching of Jesus. We live by the Spirit. We read John chapter 6, didn't we? Here's how it goes. In John 6, Jesus feeds the 5,000, walks on water, then teaches the crowd that had run around the top of that lake that he had on the, on the map to find him because they wanted the answer to a question. And the question was this. John chapter 6, verse 28. What must we do to do the works that God requires? And that's what kicks off the whole of the following bit in John 6. What are we going to do to please God? What does God want from us? And the answer Jesus gives them, and this is why I came back to when you read it, Khaled, is this. The work of God is this, says Jesus, to believe in the one he has sent. Now that's pretty much the theme of Galatians, isn't it? Paul is clearly leaning on so much of the teaching of Jesus. So the crowd that have just seen Jesus feed 5,000 with a small boy's picnic and then walk on the water, what they do next is they ask for a sign that faith is enough. Isn't that amazing? Isn't human nature incredible? You want me to jump out of this plane? I've got three parachutes. Let me check again. Show me again. And in response to that demand for a sign, Jesus taught them about drinking his blood and eating his flesh. Would you have done that? He gives them this big enigmatic statement that they can easily misunderstand. But he's telling them about feeding on him. Faith and feeding. We need to feed on Him. This is where life in the Spirit happens, as we're feeding on Him, on our relationship with Jesus day by day. It's not about a piece of bread cut into a neat square with the crust taken off, and a little sweet little cup of vimto. What do you use in your place? I don't know. Roadster. Cordial. Cordial! Fruit <laughs> juice is the best, isn't it? It's about feeding on Jesus. Feeding your soul in fellowship with Him. Of course we do that. Of course we use the symbols. But it's about faith and it's about feeding on Him. Your spiritual life. And they found it very hard teaching, and it was hard teaching. The crowd found it hard. The legalists walked away and many left Him. Many left Him. What's going on in Galatians? 
that a situation Paul was, or at least fears, he was seeing in Galatia? At that point, Jesus says, the Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. What does Paul say? <laughs> we live by the Spirit. We just dealt with the flesh. See the close relationship between the way Paul is teaching and what Jesus taught? People always want to draw a wedge they, between Jesus and Paul. You yeah, can't. Not if you've understood Jesus. And not if you've understood Paul. Lots of interlacing themes between John 6 and this passage in Galatians. But here's the point in Galatians 5. In the teaching of Paul, as of Jesus, the Spirit is the one who gives life. After the return of the incarnate Christ to glory, it's the Spirit who gives life. How does he do that? He does it at conversion. He convinces an individual of sin and righteousness and the judgment that is to come, which leads people to seek the Lord. He, he doesn't convince of the philosophical emptiness of atheism, of the importance of believing in creationism. Oh, I'm sure he does. But those are not the primary things. He convinces of sin and of righteousness and of the judgment that's coming. And brings people to life. And he gives that gift of faith. And regenerates that person as they trust in Christ so that they are born again. He does it at the beginning. The Spirit gives life to start with. And then he does it all the way along. The Christian life. After Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is the one who comes amongst us. And stands in our midst. He is the presence of Jesus in our daily experience. Jesus who is the way... We walk as his disciples, the, the, the truth we believe is his faithful ones, that the life we live as his people, the Spirit mediates his presence to us. He is the one who has come that we as followers might have life and have it to the max. And the Spirit now does that job for Jesus, because Jesus' body has gone back to glory. Is that making sense? Do you want coffee? <laughs> Don't that. What's the matter? Do you see this makes sense? He is the one who is working to bring us to life and to give us life as we live the life that God intends by grace, through faith alone, leaning on Him. So since we live by the Spirit, something follows us. Since we live by the Spirit and work in and through us, mediating the presence of the risen, ascended Lord Jesus, something follows. There's the proposition. We live by the Spirit, Galatians 5.25, here's the exhortation, let us keep in step with the Spirit.